Splatoon 3's fresh season has been it for two weeks. Yes, I know I'm late. Bringing us many new weapons and changes to the game as a whole. This video took quite a while to make, so if you like it, be sure to drop a like. But without further ado, let's get into the comparison of Splatoon 3's 3.0.0 fresh season patch. First off, two new stages have been added. Umami Ruins, a brand new Scorch Gorge inspired stage, and Manta Maria, a returning stage from Splatoon 2. We also have two new specials, Kraken Royale, a reworked version of Splatoon 1's Kraken, and Super Chunk, a special that launches 12 bombs to distract opponents and provide cover for teammates. Amongst other things, we've also been given 11 new weapons for various classes. On to the actual patch notes, Big Swig's damage to non-player objects like Brellas and Splashwells has been doubled, allowing an easier time breaking them down and challenging them. First bombs now take 0.16 seconds longer for Ink to begin recovering after being thrown. Small amounts of special power-up on Killer Whale have been given a minor boost in ability power, so one main of special power-up now does more for Killer Whale, while maxed out gear works how it did pre-patch. Trezor can now deal 20% more damage to Crab Tank's armor, still needing two shots to completely break it, but can now potentially one-shot Crab in their conditions. Inkjet got a 25 times damage increase on Crab's armor as well, now taking two Raw directs to destroy instead of five. Ultrastamp also got a three times damage increase on Crab's armor. It was already good at mauling through HP specials before, but now it can do it just a little bit better. Ultrastamp, Inkjet, and Crab Tank are now slightly quieter on deployment when enemies pop these specials. This change only applies to the opposing team. Airspray MG, NZAP85, Tri Slosher, Ballpoint, and Tri Stringer have all been given a special point reduction of 10 points, making special charging a bit easier for them. Other things that were added include the new jukebox to change the lobby music, an increase in products of the clothing shops, now displaying 9 items instead of 6, a new clear all feature for lockers, and some random Samurai stuff that I'll not dig into today. Online table turf is also added, and in doing so, Nintendo has changed some of the decorative table layouts in both the main lobby and the show as well. Now, there are a lot of stage changes that I'm going to cover extremely quickly. If you struggle to keep up with me, you can go back and watch this section again, or you can check out the patch notes that I'll link in the description. You got that? Intel Elite now has a right side ramp in every mode, and a one we drop down on left side spawn in every mode except for Rainmaker. In both Turf and Splatoon's Metal Knight has a wider balloon, new sight, and a slightly moved sight block. The random telephone from left side has been removed, until parts of the stage have been changed to steel platforms as shown. On Turf and Splatoon's Hakovich Marker has been given an extended ground section before the glass night post, a new balloon left side, more cover next to the bins, and an inkable block just after the drop down. However, Glamblitz only has an extended block. The massive uninkable block right side on Turf 4 is now removed, and a big pole has been added in the center of the stage on both Turf and Splatoons. Glamblitz is the same as before. Mid Speed Metalworks now has two uninkable blocks in mid on every mode except for Turf Control, which wasn't updated in the patch. A new balloon has been added under the bridge in middle of Turf 4. The two balloons in mid on Turf 4 and Platins are now removed, and two car walls and pillars are placed off the side of mid. Hammerhead Bridge has a new balloon on the landing ahead of spawn. The anchor block on the left snipe has been moved slightly. This platform has been extended with some extra cover added on both Torf 4 and Splat Zones. The right side block has been moved with a new balloon and cover added on both Torf 4 and Splat Zones. The left and right blocks in mid are now extended with some extra cover on both Torf 4 and Splat Zones. The anchor block at mid on Terror Control has been swapped for balloons. The left side route now has an extra balloon and an anchor block on both Terror Control and Clan Blitz. Remaker is still the same as before. This barrier next to the ramp on Terror Control, Remaker and Clan Blitz has been extended over the landing bit. The Clan Basket has been brought close to the right side of the stage, making Clan Blitz easier from the ramp. And a new wall was added just behind the basket for extra cover. On Museum Duff on Sino, two new blocks have been added left side of spawn on turf 4, but not Remaker and Clan Blitz. A new sign has been added on the right flank route for extra cover. An inkable block is placed either side of the middle spinner in turf 4. The giant spinners in turf 4 have been changed a bit, having their high walls shrunk and their outer parts removed. And three balloons have been added just before middle both the upper platform and the left side drop down. Mahi Mai's wind block at mid on turf 4 has been adjusted to provide more cover, as well as give it an extra option to provide as a wall jump section as well, the upper platforms. Turf 4's mid now has two new inkable blocks for when the stage changes. The balloon on Splat Zones have been swapped out for a pillar with a sign on top. And an extra uninkable block was added just before the drop down on Splat Zones for extra cover. Mega now has a new sign on both turf 4 and Splat Zones with no tower control or Clan Blitz. The spawning ground Splat Zones and control have extended slightly to more like the Clan Blitz variation of the rail, which wasn't touched in the patch. And finally, Wahoo been given a new pull to Milan for Torfos Platons and Clan Blitz. Oh boy, that was a doozy. This update was a mouthful to comprehend. The devs seem to be experimenting with stage changes in ways we weren't really expecting. I just hope these changes are for the better, and if not, we'll hopefully be undone for more appropriate tweaks. The official patch notes will be in the description if you want a more in-depth look at what I did or didn't mention in this video. With that being said, thank you for watching today's video, and I'll see you all next time.